last five years, I've mentioned my electronic eating device called a Liftware Level quite a few times. It surely was a godsend to have found that eating utensil, and I've used it two to three times almost every day since. Cindy and I have switched our meal pattern to have our big meal of the day at noon, with one of the reasons being my arm was not as fatigued as it was becoming by the end of the day. Adding a scoop plate also increased my ability to independently feed myself. This worked well for us during the past years, but now I can feel the decreasing strength and more fatigue drastically affecting the performance of my arm I used to simply lift food from plate to mouth, even when pivoting off my elbow placed on the table top. So what's my next plan? Stay tuned for a review of two feeders that I'm using during a three-week no-cost trial. So, what is this OB eating device that I'm about to consider for future use as my stage 3 IBM is continuing to take a nosedive? The OB eating device is a specially designed tabletop robot that allows persons with a debilitating disease or condition like IBM to feed themselves at a pace at which they choose to eat. As I'm continuing to develop fatigue in my eating arm and can visualize the near future inability to lift any utensil to my mouth to feed myself, I ventured off in search of a solution. Some people might suggest to just let my spouse feed me, but I sought a method that would still allow her to enjoy her own meal rather than having to interrupt her meal time when feeding me. As the OB feeding device is not priced for the faint of heart, I wasn't going to shell out $6,800 just to see if this toy would work for me. I wanted to eliminate the need to have my wife feed me manually and wanted to check it out for others living with the consequences of deep stage 3 inclusion body myositis. Will Hark the Herald Angels Sing? During my research, I ran across a website called Assistive Technologies and realized each U.S. state had state and often regional offices. I looked for that office in my home state of Kansas and browsed through their offerings. Lo and behold, their website even explained all the services they provide and also provided a list of devices and durable medical equipment, many popular among IBMers. That inventory list included the item I was looking for, an OB feeding device. I emailed our regional office and asked about a trial of the OB and was emailed a form to sign which explained the trial conditions. While waiting for the shipment, I had plenty of opportunity to watch countless YouTube videos about its use. Cindy also learned about food preparation and what other responsibilities she might encounter. We also had time to review the 40-page user's manual. The OB feeder has a small footprint so as not to take up too much room on your home or restaurant table and will even work on an overbed type table. It weighs less than 8 pounds. Cindy and I will demonstrate the OB being used in all three of these locations plus some videos of me using it from a swing away table in front of my lift recliner. Cindy will feature a sampling of many food dishes easily handled by either of the two spoons that come with the OB and I will explain what the two switches do next. Although OB can be operated with only one switch, using two switches unlocks the full potential regarding the dish selection by the user. If only one switch is utilized, OB will select which dish selection food will be spooned from and repeat scooping from that dish three times before moving on to the next compartment. When two switches are plugged in for use, one switch is the choose switch. Each time the select button is pressed, OB spoon will move in a counterclock direction until it's over the food you want to eat next. The second switch is the delivery button that tells OB it's time to take a spoonful of food to the delivery location set for your eating session. Food preparation for the OB is not difficult, and food should be cut up into bite-sized pieces, no larger, than three quarters of an inch to fit better on the spoon. 
Smaller morsel sizes are also recommended for anyone experiencing swallowing problems. Food bowls contain a recommended fill to line that indicate a four ounce portion. Okay, Cindy has prepared a nice meal for me, dished it up into Obi's four section dish and positioned it on the robot's placemat base. Before letting me eat, she turns on Obi, allows it to go through its short startup ritual, then presses the train button before covering the learn button on the arm and moving the spoon's location to the delivery location just in front of my mouth. When the delivery location has been determined, the train button is pressed one more time and it's time to start eating. I'm operating the two pressure switches to operate the obi that are laying on my lap. But wait! Obi's instruction manual warns not to use this device if the user suffers from dysphagia as many IBMers can suffer from varied degrees of difficult swallowing, the user is still and always responsible for how much food is allowed into the mouth. If the user has control of his swallowing problems by controlling food morsel size and length of food chew time, use of this machine is as safe as having a caregiver feed the IBMer with a spoon or a fork. If Obi is delivering a larger amount of food than you want, just simply take some of the food off the spoon. After successfully chewing and swallowing that first amount, the rest will be waiting for you on the spoon. Since I've already become a bib wearer a few years ago, that might not change if I want to keep those food drips from the cloth facade we call a shirt. But, Obi helps me out in that regard by wiping the bottom of the spoon on the dish before delivering it to my mouth on every spoonful it scoops. Obi also has the ability to reposition remaining food items left in every food compartment. Taking Obi out to a restaurant also works nicely, but be prepared to be asked questions by others dining around you. For use at home, all food serving containers and spoons from both devices are dishwasher and microwave safe. During a restaurant visit, ask your waitress to rinse off the plate or carry a plastic bag to wrap the plate in for the trip home. Before leaving, I would be remiss if I didn't look into my future with this IBM disease. At some point in time, I'll probably only be able to eat from my adjustable bed in the bedroom, so let's try that next. Mmm, Cindy's cooking tastes just as good in the bedroom as it does anywhere else. The mealtime partner works okay, but compared to the Obi revealed itself as the 13-year-old technology that it is. Additionally, there's only a little information available for us to read electronically, remembering Stage 3 IBMers can't handle reading the hard copy manual with so little available use of our arms and hands. The choice of the correct food scraper cover was paramount in getting a spoonful of food to your mouth as well as if you put too much food in any of the bowls, the spoon will stall out. Well, that's a quick review of a few robotic feeding devices shown being used by me, a deep stage 3 IBMer. The Obi operated as advertised with grace and dignity. My spouse appreciated the help it provided and bib cleaning was at a minimum. The mealtime partner seemed so much larger than required and had so many pieces to clean and store between uses. But unless you can find some funding to assist you in covering the $6,000 plus costs of these devices, you'd better start saving for it soon. 
The Mealtime Partner is a much older technology device and is yet more expensive than the Obi unless you can find a used one. Your local assistive technology office in your state might be able to assist you with your technical device requirements as your IBM decreases your skeletal muscles. As in my case, Assistive Technology of Kansas provided me with a mealtime partner to use before the availability to try out the OBI. As I recognize the need for these devices to help both Cindy and I, I will be talking to the Assistive Technology Office about the rest of the story for taking the next step in getting this type of technology in the near future to keep my stay-at-home wish alive, hopefully for some additional years. There are other feeders made that decline to let me demonstrate them to you without me purchasing their product. I again remind you to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already a subscriber. Hitting that thumbs up button also adds to the advocacy of IBM. Stay nourished, my IBM friends.